In this video, I'm going to be going over a time I lost my love for football, why a lot of players find themselves in this situation and how you can avoid it, um, because I really do believe this is a very avoidable feeling, losing your love for the game um, in whatever moment for however long that's coming up next. Hi guys, my name is Dave and this is Simply Soccer. If you're new to the channel where we release videos every single day at the moment to help you improve your game and stand out on the pitch. So if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button and bell notification uh, so that you don't miss any of the videos that we release. And as always, make sure you get my free ebook Game Changer, which will be linked down below if you haven't already. Now today I want to talk about um, some period of time or a period of time where I really lost the love um, for the game that I once had. And I've since regained that love and I'll also go over how I did that. Um, but this was a sport I never really thought that this would happen where I would lose the love for the game, where I would lose the love of playing because I was so madly in love with this game. And in fact, this happens at all levels. There are even pro players, uh, some notable pro players who admitted that they weren't enjoying their football. They were falling out of lo love of the game. Even players that started out as incredibly bright prospects um, who fell out of love of it, um, out of love with football, ended up retiring at an early age or just going on to do something else because they lost their passion for it. And I think this is a completely avoidable thing. Uh, so if you're someone who thinks that maybe you've lost your passion for football or there have been times when this has happened or you just want to avoid this altogether, keep watching because I'm going to go over what happened. So for me personally, and I think this is what usually happens to any player who loves football but ends up losing their love for it is it all comes down to the amount of pressure and expectation that is put on the person. And it also comes down to why you play football in the first place. So for me, and for most people, we start playing football, why? Why do we start playing football? Because we love playing it, because it's fun, because we enjoy the process of playing football, whether it's in game, um, whether it's we enjoy the training, whatever it is, there's something about it that we love. You know, me as a kid, you know, football was a way for me to express myself. It was a way for me uh, to run around, you know, it was a way for me to have a lot of fun. And so when times got to the point where it wasn't as much fun or I wasn't finding ways to make it fun, I started losing the love for it. You know, when I started putting all this pressure and expectation on myself, you know, without really even a reason for doing so, just because that's what everyone else did, I started falling out of love of the sport. Because at the end of the day, sure, you can put all this pressure on yourself, all these expectations on yourself, and then completely hit those expectations. But if you end up hating the sport, then it, it really is for nothing. Because at the end of the day, I really do believe in life. Our aim is to be happy. Our aim is to do things that fulfill us, things that love uh, that we love. So if we put so much pressure pressure on ourselves that we end up falling out of love with the thing um, that we're trying to achieve things in, then I think it's for nothing. You know, it's the reason why a lot of people who end up becoming wealthy uh, end up being miserable and depressed because they don't aren't really in love with what they're doing. You know, a lot of people say it's not about, I mean, this is going completely off topic, but just to stay, stay with this example, they say um, it's not about how much money you make, it's how you make your money. You know, you can make millions doing something you hate and absolutely hate your existence. You know, they say you can cry in a Lamborghini, you know, it's a little better. Or you could be someone who maybe makes less, but you absolutely love what you do. And that passion really does mean something. And so for a lot of football players, I think what ends up happening, and again, this was for myself, I put way too many expectations and way too much pressure on myself. And what I mean is I started trying to control uncontrollable things. And so that pressure would be in the form of like if I didn't play well in a certain game or if I, um, you know, my team wasn't performing well or we weren't winning. You know, if we lost, I would get so upset that it would affect me in very negative ways. It would affect the way I viewed myself. It would affect my view of the game. Whereas if we won, then my view of the game would be completely different. If I played well, my view of myself would be completely different. And I put so much in my self-esteem in football that it really you could predict how I was going to be as far as my mood or how I was going to be as a person based on the last game. Uh, you know, if we won at the weekend and I played well, um, you know, I was probably going to have a pretty good week. I was going to be joking around. I was going to be happy. But if I had a bad game or we lost um, or something of the, like, like that, or maybe I'm injured, you know, you could probably predict I was going to have a pretty bad week. And although, you know, this could just be taken as, well, it's good. You take the game seriously. You don't like to lose all this kind of stuff. And yeah, there is a place for that. But there's a level of extreme to where when that's dictating your life, it ends up being detrimental. You know, and it also doesn't serve me in becoming a better player. 
You know, it's about learning from your mistakes, the games you lose, your bad performances, not beating yourself up to the point where you put so much of your self-worth in it. Um, and so for you guys who have maybe fallen into this place, it's about only taking, you know, putting this much emotion into the goals that you can actually control, not the ones you can't control. Because believe it or not, you can't actually control whether you win or lose. Now, you can control certain parts of your performance, absolutely, but sometimes you can't even control if you have a bad performance. You can control how you train. You can control how you react to a loss, how you react to a win, how you react to your mistakes, things of that nature. But understand that the only thing you really can control, and it applies to football as well, is your reaction. For me, I lost the love of it when I put so much expectation on myself that it weighed me down and prevented me from, you know, loving the game as much as I once did. Of course, I learned from that mistake and got myself back to a point where I enjoy the game sometimes more than ever right now because I'm able to let go of those bad performances. I'm able to let go of those expectations and really just go, you know what, I'm just going to give my best and I'm going to let go of expectations. I'm going to give my best and you know what, if I have a bad performance, yeah, that's going to hurt. It's going to sting for a little bit, but I'm going to find ways to move beyond that and, you know, find the controllable things that I can do to make sure I'm better next time or whatever else it is. But when you start putting this much pressure and expectation on yourself like it's the end of the world if you lose you know if it's the end of the world if um this happens or whatever you know it's it's not serving you and it really can make you fall out of love of the game at least it's what happened for me i've heard stories from other players where this has been the case um you know there's again so many pro players that when the game started getting to the point where they couldn't enjoy it um, they started losing their love for the game. Now, that's not to say they couldn't have found ways to enjoy it because I think another thing is if you can enjoy the process, like the process of working out, the process of recovering, seeing your body grow, seeing yourself become a better player, then that's a way to, again, find happiness and fulfillment in what you're doing. And I, I for one, you know, have been able to teach myself to learn to love the process a little bit more, something I didn't as much. I just liked to play and you know, maybe didn't enjoy as much the workouts um, in the past, but I learned to do that. Um, then yeah, you can also make it so you love the sport through that and you're not um, feeling as much, um, what's the word I'm looking for? I can't even think of the word. This is very raw right now because I have no script or anything like that, but feeling like, oh, I've got to force myself to do these things or whatever else it is. You know, force is not the place you want to come from. You want to come from a place of empowerment, you know, knowing why you're doing what you're doing. And so you could even come from the place of, I love football. I love seeing myself get better. I love seeing how far I can go. You know, a great thing to say to yourself is, you know, what if I put in the work and everything I could to become the best player I possibly can and see how far I can get in the sport that I love. You know, that's a great foundation to come from because now you suddenly have that aim, that goal, um, and you're not putting this uncontrollable expectation on it. You're just saying, what if? You know, you're not saying, you know, I have to become this or I have to become that or I have to put these unnecessary expectations on myself. You just go, hey, what if I actually did my best every single training session? What if I forgave myself when maybe I was a little off the ball? What if I forgive myself when I made a mistake? What if I really do everything I know to do and keep learning uh, more things to do to become the best player I possibly can be? You know, that question is going to lead you to actually moving through your workouts more instead of giving up. It's going to lead you to really be more motivated, be more inspired as you go on this journey. So I hope that can help you in some way. I know a little bit all over the place, but the, the, the really the moral of it, the lesson in this is don't put so much expectation on yourself that it weighs you down and make sure you're doing this from a place of love because as soon as you do it from that place of obligation or expectation or you're putting this unnecessary pressure on yourself, you're going to start to lose the love for it. And once you lose the love for something, guys, it's only a matter of time before... Uh, you end up quitting or you end up going through the motions or something of that nature. You know, um, you want to be getting up and playing football, putting in the workouts, putting in the recovery work, putting in the, new, um, the diet, uh, eating in the way you need to eat because you love it. And anything less than that, it's going to be a struggle. Anyway, guys, that's going to be it for this one. And I'll see you in the next video.